Hi, just a quick video. Not much to see here, just a uh, Raspberry Pi. I've got this Raspberry Pi 4 compute module, uh, which I've had left over, and I just got a uh, heatsink, top heatsink for it, and um, this little add-on board here. So if you haven't seen the new Raspberry Pi, well, it's not new, isn't it? There's the 5 now. Um, but anyway, <laughs> it's one of the newer ones that I've got. Um, so it's the Raspberry, because I've got lots of three Raspberry Pi 3s. Um, so I've got this 4 uh, compute module. I'm uh, potentially going to run Home Assistant on this. I'm going to have a play around with it. Anyway, um, uses technology license from Proant AB. Okay, um, is that the antenna thing? Because there's the, the antennas actually uh, in there. That's why they have the. There you go. You can see it on the top there. That's why they have the cutout in the heatsink there. They've got a little uh, coax as well if you want to use that for an external antenna. But uh, there you go. Anyway, Raspberry Pi 4 compute module. So they put the. Um, so they've got the heatsink. I won't take it off, but there's thermal pads on the uh, processor itself and on the DC to DC converter chip down here. Yeah, under there. So you can tell by the big vias there that uh, that's regularly uh, quite um, grunty thermally. So that's a dead giveaway. Um, like the big test points on here. Nice. So they must have a nice big production bed of nails um, tester. Sorry, there's a bit of smoke around here. Um, <laughs> sold a smoke. Do have my... Uh, uh, well, a fume extractor on. Anyway, so I got this um, little adapter board because the Raspberry Pi, the compute module can't do much on its own. It's just got these uh, high-density uh, PCB interconnects here. And uh, we've got this little adapter board which has a uh, USB or a C or a um, uh, DC. Is that a DC power jack or is that audio? I don't actually know. Anyway, it's got a micro SD uh, slot and it's got a uh, Ethernet connector as well, and a um, USB-A and a HDMI, um, mini HDMI out. What does that switch do? I don't know. Boot. Okay, so it's some sort of boot switch. I don't know the ins and outs of this. I guess I'll find out. Uh, what else? We oh, we've got a little key. Push button key. Ah, uh -huh. <laughs> guess I'll find out what that does. Anyway, what I'm going to do is just solder um, this connector in here, because it was supplied with this, and it's nicely colour-coded, so that's pretty groovy. I've got no instructions, so I'm going to figure out which way around it goes, because it's not uh, symmetrical here, so obviously the black ones are all your grounds, green is like I.O., blue is, I don't know, red is power, uh, for example. So, um, does it go in that way? It looks like it might, because you can see... don't have my yellow poker. You can see that those two pads there are joined, and that looks like it is power. So, yep, I'd be happy to confirm that those two are power over there. So, I think it goes that way around, and uh, that one there is ground. So, you can see that that's going through some ground fill stitch in there. So, that was absolutely correct. If you whack it around in this direction here, wah, black and green, that's not going to line up. Nah, nothing, nothing lines up, and this is obviously going to your ground plane. So, no. It obviously goes in like that. I don't plan on using this header for this application, but uh, why not solder it in before I plug it in onto my heatsink board? It came nicely supplied with it, so might as well use it just in case. So I'm just going to solder this sucker, and uh, that's all this video is about. So there you go. Nothing more to see here. So let's get in there. They are annoyingly close, actually. So. Very annoyingly close there, but anyway, so what we'll do is we'll just solder, so the board's pretty flat, just put some extra weight on that, and boom, there we go, oh, hello, hello, why aren't you melting, you took a while, um, and the thing is, you will, Burn your mat a little bit, but so I should have mounted on something. But I just want to whack in a couple of oh, two opposite ends. No whackers. All right, there we go. That's better. Maybe the tip wasn't at the right angle before. What have I got? Like a two mil, two and a half mil chisel or something like that. So that will hold it in place nicely. I'll get my vice stick. 
if I can. This lab is in a constant state of flux. So no, ah, oh, there it is. <laughs> That's right in front of me, buried under a couple of boards. So I'll get my fly stick in here and just hold that in place. Unfortunately, it's not the best thing for this, but. Hello. Will that actually keep that? Uh, it doesn't really keep that in place, but eh, it's good enough. Keeps it off the mat. She'll be right. All right. So let's go solder, shall we? Oh, oh, oh! Not happy with it. Not happy, Jan. So I might actually get in this orientation like that so let's go shall we there we go that's tacked in place take me a couple of joints to get into the swing of things and I'm not looking at the board I'm looking at my screen here so, the eyes ain't what they used to be, but this is trivial, of course. But the problem is, is that with the shiny light I've got from my... By filming this, I get... If I look... If I stare down at the joints, I actually get glare on the joints, and it's not good. So, <laughs> ideal. This is not the light... If I was hand-soldering this without using the screen... Yeah, with the, if I wasn't recording it, I would not be using this. I'd, I'd have different lighting. So, it's all about... Jeez, I'm not doing this very quick, am I? Oh, hello. The flux was a bit funny there. There you go. Oh. Oh, hello. Don't leave that there. What did I do there? Could have picked a smaller tip, but this was on here, and it's good enough for Australia, so no wackers. All right, that tip is, um, I think it's worn out on one side. It's it's fine on the other side, <laughs> but uh, on this side, it's it's not good. I've tried to tin it, and it ain't taken. I've tried to scrape it. I don't know. It looks like it's just totally dead ski, so. Might have to get a new tip. There you go. All right. Yeah, I could like drag solder, try and drag solder this or something, but I enjoy doing it onesies, twosies, because it's quite therapeutic. Thank you very much. Yeah, the stick vice doesn't really hold it down terrifically because of the pin header is protruding from the bottom, so it's not. It's not the best thing there. Oh, I copped a bit of, copped a bit of oh, fumes. Didn't, didn't go up. Didn't get sucked up by the weller there. I've got it on low-ish, so it doesn't. So yeah, hopefully you don't hear it that much. That's the plan. And beautiful. Big ground one there. Oh, hello. That's what your problem with your two-dimensional soldering stuff under a two-dimensional screen. You don't get a feel for the 3D and nature of it. Like going over pads, uh, going over like pins and high components and things. So, yeah, it's a disadvantage. I can't have that ball hanging off the side of the tip there. It's annoying. Ooh. Again, that was the uh, that was filming on the screen. Leave it in the comments if you're a screen user or you do it under a microscope or whether or not you do this by eye. Normally I'd do this by eye, but I thought I would uh, just rec ah, record it. So. I have to put up with the glaring light. 
I mean, I could turn that off. Here you go. That's a bit better. So, well, from my eyes anyway. And I guess it may not look as nice. So, there you go. That's compl That's pretty terrible, Muriel. <laughs> It'll do. It's good enough for Australia. And uh, that's it. There you go. We have a one complete Raspberry Pi compute module adaptory board. He's got it on eBay. Cheap. There are quite a few sellers on eBay of this thing. Um, so, yeah, really cheap. So, no problem. There you go. And the board to board interconnect. Ta da! It's just going to mate on there like that. And should go in like that. There you go. Whoa, look at that. Bob's your uncle. There you go. That's sweet. Now I'm going to power this thing up and uh, try and install Home Assistant on it. Don't know what I'm going to do with Home Assistant, but I just want to have a fiddle with it. Uh, maybe consolidate my solar um, into there. And it's because uh, apparently you can get an end phase plug in for um, Home Assistant so or Solar Assistant. And then I think, no, you can get an end phase plug in for Home Assistant, for Solar Assistant which I have to run on another Raspberry Pi 3 and then I can use Home Assistant to combine the two solar assistants <laughs> from my two different solar systems. So, yeah, that's something like that. That's the plan. So, there you go. Simple. Catch you next time.